give warm welcome to Case Brooks. Good morning, everyone. Are we all realizing that you will be bound to your chairs for one and a half hours? <laughs> just, just, in, just in case. We will have a short break halfway through so you can stretch your legs and so forth. I have to um, say that when Matthäus said that I would have a few words about contests, we have to change that terminology. It's going to be a Bible. <laughs> about contest. Who here in the room has been a judge in any contest? And for all the others it's hell no! <laughs> Not me! Why? You're not confident? You don't know what it's about? Nobody asked you? You never told anyone in the organization team that you would want to be a judge. It is quite amazing how through our clubs, areas, divisions and districts we always struggle, struggle, struggle to find judges. Why is this? Why is it? So my idea was to put a workshop together about judging and maybe all of you here will be judging in the next cycle of contests coming up, being the International Speech Contest and the Evaluation Contest. Today we will focus on the International Speech Contest. We have been given two forms, but we will work with those during this session. So, pack the forms for the time being and enjoy the right of a few slides. What will be the content of this workshop? A couple of elements there. We will look at your role as a judge. We will look at your learning. What, what, what can you learn being a judge? Not what you learn to, to be a judge, but what's in it for yourself. Watch it. There are traps. When you are a judge, there are traps. What do you do to plan to be a judge? Is that just turn up, hey, here I am, I'm the judge today. <laughs> There's some planning involved. And we will have a huge session in this workshop. The reason why it's one and a half hours on practicing judging. And you will be amazed about the objectivity of all the judges here in front of me. And the last session of question and answers. So your role, what, what, what's your role as a judge? Anyone? Are you giving it away? Get out of this room. <laughs> <laughs> Give feedback. <laughs> At first listen. Sorry? Listen. Listen. Timing? Timing. Timing. Interesting. Evaluating. 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 Sorry to say, all wrong answers. <laughs> As a judge, you're totally oblivious. You don't know what the time is. When you judge, time is not an issue. It's therefore that during a contest, the timing lights should not be seen by the audience. They should be in such a way that nobody in the audience can see the timing lights, only the contestant. So your judging is purely on the performance, not on time. So not allowed to take your smartphone, start clicking, oh, 7.32, Doop. doesn't count. Evaluation. I have something to say about that a bit later. But this young gentleman here gave the right answer. The role of a judge is only one thing, and one thing only, and that is 
to find a winner on the day. Have you experienced this in your club with speeches? A fellow club member doing speeches? All of a sudden you are in this club meeting. What happened to him or her? What a stellar performance! If that person would have been on the day in the contest, he or she may have won the contest. So it's finding the winner on the day. And indeed, now I'm coming back to you. Judging has nothing to do with evaluation. You don't give feedback. Who was that here with feedback? You don't give feedback. You don't say, I recommend to you to write a new speech. <laughs> when you are a judge, you will not be known that you are a judge. So when the contest is over and you walk out of the room and you go and grab a coffee, hey, I really liked your speech. I had 100 points for you. <laughs> Never ever discuss your judging. Keep it close to your chest. Yep, I've got a winner. I got a winner. And it is you. So you don't judge on behalf of the audience. You don't judge on behalf of your club members. It is you be the judge. So what's your learning in being a judge? What do you learn being a judge? If you would be a judge, what would be coming to your mind first up as a learning part? Speech techniques. Learn, learn good speech techniques. So, yeah, I, I see and I focus on the good speeches as a judge. So you're looking for a good speech. Yeah. But what is a good speech? Mm -hmm. That's very, may vary for you towards your neighbor. She may see something else in a good speech. I would say that looking at different aspects of the speech. Look at different aspects of the speech. Okay. Yeah, speak up. We're all learning here. <laughs> Sorry? You learn how to be objective. Is that possible? No. <laughs> you learn criteria. You learn Next criteria. Time you, you will take part as a contestant, you know. Learn to judge everyone in the same way. Learn to? Judge everyone in the same way. So make it like an, a guide, a guidebook that when you are judging in a competition, doing table topics, you will apply the same skills, the same criteria as when you would be in an international speech contest. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that everyone should be judged in the same way. No matter who. The first person, the third person, the last person, everyone should say the same criteria. We will, get, we will get to that part, for sure. Learn how to compare. Say again. How to compare. How to compare. Is that a difficulty for people? <laughs> a lot of people know how to compare. But it can be in a very nice format and a learning tool, for sure. Anyone else? To look for the details. Details. Okay. <laughs> Suppose you're judging a contest with 10 speakers. International speech contest, five to seven minutes. 10 speakers. Okay. 10 times seven, plus one minute for the judging. 10 times eight is 80 minutes. You're sitting in that chair, sir. 80 minutes. Listening, absorbing like a sponge. So it's a big, big task, or can be a big task. At a club contest with three contestants, it might be a bit easier. I would say. Klaus wants to add something. I think you learn to listen to yourself. Was the speed touching and analyze why? Was he disturbed by improper grammar? and find out if it's a speech, if it's a language, everything. It's listen to yourself and your feelings. Are you touched? <coughs> Can you follow? It's a, didn't you, you don't understand. It is boring. Why? Structure, the speaking is monotonous, or what else? Mm -hmm. Listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. 
and listen to yourself may need a tool and that tool would be the, the judging form we will talk about a bit later. This is what I came up with a few words that is in it when you are a judge. It enables you to work on your planning. It enables you to start to assess things. It enables you indeed to, be, to try to be your objective. Make choices when you have 10 speakers. You've get allocated the points. 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79. You allocated every speaker the same amount of points. Who will be the winner? You decide. And focus. Remember what I said, 80 minutes in that chair. You need a bit of focus. All these elements, they will to come together in a toolkit. And it is this toolkit that we will talk about a little bit more. But uh, be aware. Not be the force with, with you. Be aware. There are traps. <laughs> <laughs> that little boy is me, by the way. There are traps. What are the traps when you are a judge? The first trap I can think of is what we call the first and last speaker syndrome. If you follow the world championships of Toastmasters International, I wouldn't say always, but there are a minimum of nine contestants. And how many times the winner has come out of that final bracket is quite Amazing. First and last speaker. Because you hear the first speaker. It's a very good speaker. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 100 points. Hey, I don't have to listen to the other nine. I found my winner. First trap. So be careful that you judge every single contestant on the same merits. Almost after you have done your judging sheet, after every speaker, refresh. Second trap I could think of is, I love the underdog. You know, when you're in a contest and there's four or five speakers and there is this one speaker struggling a bit, but oh so sweet. Yeah, I love that speaker. That should be the winner. Is that right or wrong? wrong. Why is it wrong? <laughs> because you have to find the best speech. You judge the speech of the person. But hey, I think it's the best speaker. The best speech of the day. I think it's the best speech of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Because this is the funny thing about judging. All the sheets you've got there. I throw them away. I'm going to sit and listen to the 10 speeches. 10 speeches are finished. Speaker number 4 is my winner. Speaker number 6 is my second. Speaker number 7 is my third. Sign the paper. Give it to the chief judge. Done. Is that fair? Is that objective? No. But it is not forbidden. But I wouldn't recommend it. Because it doesn't give any satisfaction. The personally I like approach, which is a bit similar to the first one, but maybe in a, a different bracket. There's this spanky guy as a speaker on the front, and all the lady judges, whoa, <laughs> that's my winner. Or this beautiful lady coming up on the stage, you know. Speech content, or after the speech, what was she actually talking about? I don't know, but hey, I like her. <laughs> we 
which again is a bit in the bracket of the desert hello. You, you all have had this experience where a speaker walks on the stage and you see this huge thing around his or her head shining. Hey, I'm it. I'm the winner. You can't tell me any of this thing. I don't even have to speak. I can stand here for seven minutes. Can you see me shine? Past performance nostalgia. <laughs> and I think that's a very important element in district. Because what do you see quite often in our contest? The same person at the same contest, at the same final, the same winner. It, be it comes a bit like that winner has a price tag, I'm the winner already on his or her jacket. But maybe on the day, that particular speaker has a <coughs> breakdown. <laughs> Forgot his or her words. Falls flat on the stage, which was not part of the speech. That kind of things. Think about it. Time for a change of approach. You have been judging a few contests and you see the same person time after time after time. Well, I had enough of that particular speaker. I want to have somebody else going home with the first prize. A no go. This is what I came up with a few words that is in it when you are a judge. It enables you to work on your planning. It enables you to start to assess things. It enables you to indeed to, be, to try to be your objective. Make choices. When you have 10 speakers, you've get allocated the points. 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79. You allocated every speaker the same amount of points. Who will be the winner? You decide. And focus. Remember what I said, 80 minutes in that chair. You need a bit of focus. All these elements, they will come together in a toolkit. And it is this toolkit that we will talk about a little bit more. But, uh, be aware. Be aware. There are traps. <laughs> that little boy is me, by the way. There are traps. What are the traps when you are a judge? The first trap I can think of is what we call the first and last speaker syndrome. If you follow the World Championships, Toastmasters International, I wouldn't say always, but there are a minimum of nine contestants. And how many times the winner has come out of that final bracket is quite amazing. First and last speaker, because you hear the first speaker, it's a very good speaker. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 100 points. Hey, I don't have to listen to the other nine. I find my winner. First round. So be careful that you judge every single contestant on the same merits. Almost after you have done your judging sheet, after every speaker, refresh. Second trap I could think of is, I love the underdog. You know, when you're in a contest, and there's four or five speakers, and there is this one speaker, struggling a bit, but oh so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I love this. This should be the winner. Is that right or wrong? 
Why is it wrong? <laughs> because you have to find the best speech. You judge the speech, not the person. But hey, I think it's the best speaker. The best speech of the day. I think it's the best speech of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Because this is the funny thing about judging. All the sheets you've got there, I throw them away. I'm going to sit and listen to the 10 speeches. 10 speeches are finished. Speaker number four is my winner. Speaker number six is my second. Speaker number seven is my third. Sign the paper, give it to the chief judge. Done. Is that fair? Is that objective? No. But it is not forbidden. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. Because it doesn't give any satisfaction. But personally, I like the problem. Which is a bit similar to the first one. But maybe it is a different bracket. There's this Tanky guy as a speaker on the front, and all the lady judges. <laughs> That's my hair. Yeah. Or this beautiful lady coming up on the stage. Speech content, or after the speech, what was she actually talking about? I don't know, but hey, I love her. <laughs> which again is a bit in the bracket of the desert. Hello. <coughs> you, you all have had this experience. A speaker walks on the stage and you see this huge thing around his or her head, shining. Hey, I'm it. I'm the winner. You can't tell me any of it. Okay? I don't even have to speak. I can stand here for seven minutes. Can you see me shine? Past performance nostalgia. <laughs> and I think that's a very important element in this trip. Because what do you see quite often in our contest? The same person at the same contest, at the same final, the same winner. It, be, it comes a bit like that winner has a price tag, I'm the winner already on his or her jacket. But maybe on the day, that particular speaker has a <coughs> breakdown. <coughs> Forgot his or her words. Falls flat on the stage, which was not part of the speech. That kind of things. Think about it. Time for a change of approach. You've been judging a few contests. Mm -hmm. And you see the same person time after time after time. Well, I had enough of that particular speaker. I want to have somebody else going home with the first prize. And I'll go. And then, finally, there is this thing where some judges do have the sheet. <coughs> They glued to the sheet rather than looking at the performance because they think, oh, what did I have to look out for on my sheet? They forgot to do the planning at home, seeing what they were having to look for. So some of your traps, and hopefully, once you've got through these traps, you become that big guy <laughs> as the judge. You will be ready to judge, objective ready to do a good job. May I add a trap? Sure. I noticed for me, new in the arena, always is John Zimmer is speaking, Peter Zimmer, some of the new face, hey, he's new in the arena, newcomer, and that's also a trap. Yeah. I like the newcomers. The first time competing against John Zimmer, wow. Yep. Yeah. Right? Not good. Thanks for that uh, contribution, that class. So let's see what's in our token. 
with regard of planning. The, the world couple in the room who have been judging, so can I have see those hands again? So for instance, that gentleman there, my fellow Toastmaster, in preparation to your judging, is there anything you do in particular? Put on rat socks or a tie? <coughs> Chef. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what in particular is your preparation? The learning curve right now. The right now. That's enough. <laughs> Can you repeat? Because I, I did not quite get it. Uh, uh, you, you should uh, read the right book. You should read the red book. Are you a Maoist? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was in the 60s red books, the 70s. Do you have a red book from Mao? <laughs> Never heard of it, I suppose, or talk. Oh. Yeah. Guidebook for judges. Guidebook for judges. Do you, do you have a guidebook for judges? <laughs> now we're getting a bit closer. Now we're getting a bit closer. All about judging and planning is prepare, prepare, prepare. It's nothing different. If you do a speech, they say the same. Prepare, <coughs> prepare, prepare. If you are a judge, it's the same kind of thing. And indeed, we do have a little Bible called the Speech Contest Rulebook. And you see XXX. That doesn't indicate the size of the rule book. It is the year. Every year there is a new rule book. Only this year changes have been made. We have been working with speech rule book 2014. What year are we in now? 2015. So do we use the speech, speech rule book 2014? Who says yes? Who says no? We use the latest version. Uh, hey folks, what, what, what speech rule book are we going to use? We need to know first if there is a book for 2015. Well, here's the latest version. Don't change, change so much. So. Oh, this is just getting your tongues wagging, isn't it? We're already disagreeing on what we're going to use. Well, that's going to be a nice contest. The one that Chief Judge is telling us to use. Not a bad option. <laughs> what, what when the Chief Judge walks in and says, Hey, here's my rule book for today. <laughs> fine with you. Not fine with me, though, as District Governor. Because all Toastmasters International contests, be it at club level, area level, division level, or district level, have to be judged in accordance with the speech contest rule. I've seen rule books floating around which were translated. I haven't seen the Polish edition yet. Maybe there is one, I don't know. Good, so we stand that one up. It was one in Germany. It was, it was different from, I think it was a translation from the speech rule book 2004. <laughs> so, slowly but securely, we have tried to tell everyone in the district the English edition of the speech rule book is the Bible for your judging, for the contest. 2014 is the only latest edition available. And I received an email and, and of a uh, division governor, and he said, um, case, uh, what is that we're going to use for this cycle? Where's the 2015 rule? And quite frankly, I did not know the answer. And if you don't know the answer, you open your laptop, and you write an email to headquarters. And indeed, headquarters came back, and they said, no, there is no rule book for 2015. As yet, this
spring cycle, we will use the speech contest rulebook 2014. <coughs> what they have changed now is that the rulebook will follow the Toastmaster year. So as from the 1st of July, we will have a speech contest rulebook 2015, which will apply to the fall cycle and spring next year. The speech contest rulebook can be downloaded from the Toastmaster International website as a PDF file, so you don't have to buy it or anything. It's readily available. And this is what it looks like. Anyone familiar with that picture? Because what was always the front picture? Has anyone an idea? Exactly. This picture would always show the winner of the international speech contest, the world champion. Yet, I'm pretty sure because I was at that contest, that was not the winner. Unless there was a check, a sex change, but that was not the winner. <coughs> and I don't know what happened if the winner did not want to have his picture on the front. Something may have happened. <laughs> this is roughly an overview of what you can see in that speech rule book. And one of the things that might be of interest is, how many different speech contests do we have? <coughs> Four. Five. Four. Five. five. Any higher bidders? Four. <laughs> Four. Good. Five. Do I have a Wait. Do I hear a six? Three. I hear a six here. Do I hear a seven? <laughs> Forty-two. Forty-two. <laughs> Forty-two contests is not bad. <coughs> how many different contests do we have? Five. Five. Let's see here. It, it, it may be difficult readable, so I get a bit closer. International speech contest, evaluation contest, humorous, table topics, tall tales, and taped speeches. Are you with that? The answer is six. There are six officially recognized speeches. How many of these speeches do we have to conduct in our district? Four. Four. One. Do I hear any of it? Four. Come on, folks. I know it's still four. early days, four. but we've got a one, we've got a four. Anyone else? Do I hear a two? No. A three? One. A four? Yeah. Five? Yes. Four. A six? Because we do have six speeches. The answer is zero. One. And one only we do have to conduct. And that is the international speech contest. Why would you think that is? I think the reason is quite simple. Because it's the only contest that will get you sky high to be on the champion <coughs> of the world in public speaking. None of the other contests will get you there. Only the international speech So if we do a humorous speech contest at our district, it is just up to the district to do that. We don't have to do it. It's courtesy of us to, to do so. Anyone familiar with the speech contest? It might be a bit of an unfamiliar term for all of us. Jerzy? Well, we even had it when we did not belong to the district. Exactly. It is a contest for clubs that not belong to a district. They are so-called undistricted clubs. And there are clubs all over the world, and they've been given a chance for a contest as well. They can send in a tape and I think it was even a winner from Romania, maybe that last year. It was second, second place. Tall Tales, anyone familiar with Tall Tales? As well? Jerzy? Or Bea, Bea. Tall Tales? What is Tall Tales all about? Tall Tales are 
stories where you are really exaggerating. It doesn't have to be true, but it has to be entertaining and hopefully funny. And those are great events that we want to organize for social events. Exactly. This morning I woke up and I saw a blue pig. I thought, is that for real? Mm -hmm. No. But I looked close. Oh no, it was the chair which was broke. <laughs> <laughs> Tall tales is exaggerating. It's almost close to humorous. There's a lot of humor in it as well. I don't know of many clubs that do the Tall Tales contest in our district. We had it once in Poland. Once or twice. Okay. Um, I know in New Zealand it, it was done. Um, so it's one of those cultural things. I want to touch short on protests and disqualification. We've been talking about timing. There was a gentleman there who I responded, time is not an issue. It's not an issue for the judge when he or she is judging. But time is obviously a very big issue because time is the only reason why it could be disqualified. And the next disqualification comes out of the pool of protests. Have you seen those contests where... I've heard that before. That's not true. That's not original. I've heard it so many times. I've seen TEDx's. I've, I've seen YouTube all over it with that speech. You were sitting in the audience. I was in the audience. Are you allowed to go up to the judge or the conference, the contest chair, to make a complaint? Are you? Yeah. Who no. says yes? Yes. No, no, no. Just a normal participant in the audience. Can, can Are you, as a normal participant, allowed? to protest about something. We cannot. No. Who says yes? Yeah, don't be shy. Uh, we're learning here. Okay? It's not an exam. You, you think you're allowed to protest. You're allowed to protest. You're allowed to protest. No. 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 Look at this here. There's only two things you can be protesting on. Legibility and originality. That are the two elements. So if you hear a speech and the speech is full of boo, water, all these types of terminology, that's not a reason to disqualify. If it is original, fine. If it's not original, because you saw it in a stand-up comedy thing or something like that. Then you can protest. And these are the only people that can lodge this protest. It's the judge or the contestant. And therefore sometimes you see these contestants, they leave the room because they don't want to hear the other speeches. It could sometimes be a trap because in the speech before, there might be a speaker who does a speech they say, my God, that was a copycat of what I watched yesterday on YouTube, what I was talking about here. So these are the two, only two <coughs> groups. And then we have the time disqualification. Any <coughs> things unclear about this part? <coughs> No. So you go all the time, you're automatically disqualified or? Yes. Uh, not automatically, it depends. There's one exception, and it is when the timing device has an, some kind of a stutter, it's not functioning properly, then the contestant will get an extra 30 seconds. So, it happens not very often, but it could happen that something happens to the timing device. So then there's an extra 30 seconds. The judges will never get to know what the times were, only the chief judge. And all you have to do at the start of announcing the winners, 
you're not saying Tracy Jones was overtime. All you will mention to your audience is that there was a time disqualification. So you don't say even how many, you don't say who, just that there was a time disqualification. That's all. Because sometimes the audience obviously will have a reasonable idea that they think this will be the winner. And then the winners are announced, not in the list. Then there could be the understand disqualification. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So it is all about prepare. We have looked at the contest rule book. Now the second part of the three parts I want to talk about in preparation. <coughs> And that is fill out the required forms. We are not running a tax department here, so it's not a lot of forms you have to fill out, but there are a few. Where can you find these forms? On toastmasters.org. You can download the whole free of charge, but only after login. So you have to log in to the website with your uh, username and password because otherwise everyone could download them. So only members can download them. And the two forms you will look for is the eligibility form for your judges <coughs> and the specific contest form. It usually comes, can be downloaded as a kit. And I've given you the eligibility form and the judging form for the International Speech Contest. Let's have a look at the eligibility form. This is the top of your form, and it's the name of the contest. So you tick the box of the contest you would be judging. Also, you have to indicate the level you are judging. Is it the club level, area level, division level, district level? And it goes on even with semi-final <coughs> and world championship. The last two boxes are only applicable to the convention of those massive national and the date of the contest. And question? Sure. When you are judge on class contest, do you need to <coughs> has to be filled out for every single contest, be it at club level, area level, any level. Who is eligible to be a judge? Who has six projects completed? Six projects to complete it. I have an easier answer. All of you are eligible. <coughs> it only depends what level. And the thing you're talking about, you will see it on your form there, is only applicable when you judge on area, division, or district level. But at club level, all of you can judge. But there is a but. It's always a but. <coughs> you have to be a member in good standing. What does that mean? Do I have to stand up straight? Nobody knows. Really? Are you kidding me or? <laughs> I have to look you straight in the eyes, see if you're kidding me or not. What is a member in good standing? Current membership. Current membership. What is current membership? <laughs> now we're getting close. Good standing means that you are an active member and your dues are paid not only with the club, with Toastmasters International. So you may say, yeah, but I paid my club two months ago. Where's the treasurer of us? Mallorca? Having a holiday? So when you pay your dues, it is always clever to go in Toastmasters International site and see if the dues have been transferred. Give it a bit of time. But the good standing applies to the dues being paid with Toastmasters International, not with the club. Talking about the um, area is, the, is again the same, the good standing, but it has to be for a minimum of six months. And you have to be done 
six speeches and the com communicator. How do we check this? You say, oh, I'm going to be a judge at the area contest. I'm fine. How, how can I check that you have done six speeches? There is no, in, in my book, there's no record of six speeches. I only can check when you have done ten speeches and you have been awarded the, com the communicator because that will show up in the system. So how do I check if someone has done six speeches? Did you do six speeches, sir? No. Oh my God! You can't do a, a judge on area then. Did you do six speeches? Oh, do I trust you? I can't show my watch. Okay, you can talk with my. I don't. I don't look at your book, and I don't talk with your big education. And the reason why is that if we go a bit further down to at the bottom of the sheet, by signing this sheet, you tell me if you have done so. And with that reason, you put the trust in me that it's been done. So you don't have to walk through the contest with your mirror uh, <coughs> under your arms. Six speeches, I can be the judge. Okay? There's another one. You can ask people to deliver the six project. See, they <laughs> but then we have a contest within a contest. <laughs> This little bit here, Judges Code of Ethics, is more or less referring back to what we've been talking about before. Um, <coughs> I can give you, say, three minutes. You have been listening to me so much. Have a bit of a look through this particular sheet we've been talking about. Um, don't have to memorize anything, but we will use this sheet a bit later on in the uh, session. So I'll give you two minutes for that. So we have a smaller group now, it's fine, because they're missing the good part. They were just listening to the first 45 minutes of boring information and yeah, when we finish with this second half, you can tell them, oh, you should have stayed in that room. <laughs> good. Quickly, I would like to walk through the judging form. Don't make too much uh, of an issue out of this. But that are basically the three prongs of preparation. Read up on the speech uh, contest rule book, fill out the forms, and walk through the judging form because it changes from contest to contest. But the international speech uh, contest form is the most wide one. There you will write the names of the contestants and at the bottom you will find the winners. You always have to place number one, two and three. So always, again, if there is a contest with only two speakers, you can't put three names in. You know, you don't put in number three, Donald Duck or something like that. You will place only the two speakers then. But if there is a contest of, say, four, you have to give one, two, three. If you only have filled in number one and two, you give it to the chief judge, the chief judge will look at it, throw it away, will not be considered. Another very important element is that you will sign your form. You, can, you have to sign it. Again, when you give it to your chief judge, winner, one, Mickey Mouse, two, Donald Duck, three, Dag Dagobert Duck. No signature. Will be thrown away. So two important elements. What is it that we're going to judge on? What is the most important element of judging? If you look at your sheet, it will be the part of content. I've heard so many times, especially in our district where we have 10 countries, 8 languages. People saying, 
Oh, I can't participate in that contest because my English is iffy. You will be surprised because that iffy is only worth 20%. So if you are a judge and you can't understand the speaker because the speech is done in Romanian and it's supposed to be an English international speech contest, is that a zero for that speaker? Why? Because you're not able to judge the other two portions. You probably won't be able to allocate 20 points for the language because you can't understand it. But maybe you can visualize the content. It's a PowerPoint presentation. The delivery. Yeah. So what I want to say is that language is often made an issue, but in judging, it's not such a big issue. Content, 50%. So half your marks go to content. Is there a message in the speech? How effective is the speech? Is the laughter? Are people focused, listening? All these elements. Speech value. What, what does the speech do to me? S on the back of that judging sheet you will find again in print uh, what the elements are about. I'm not going to talk about that a bit more. I really want to go to the practical part. Second big block, what delivery. Mateusz? Do you think it's okay to translate this? Yes. In, in Polish you mean? Club contest or area contest. Yeah, I cannot see a problem with that at all. Delivery, 30%. Is the speaker, I'm Case Bros. I'd like to do a speech for you today. But I'm a bit nervous. So delivery, 30%. And then language, 20. So we've got three blocks of objectivity. Content, 50 points maximum. Delivery, 30 points maximum. Language, 20 points maximum. So we've got language there, about 20%. 30% delivery, 50% content. So it's the content that really hits it home for an fin finding a winner. Not the language. There again on the back, you find the more uh, elaborate uh, the explanation of what it's about. And as Matthias is saying, might be a good idea maybe to translate that whole form so that people do understand what it's all about. So let the contest begin. You are all judges. Welcome to the International Speech Contest in Division B, where today we welcome the world champion of public speaking. But wait, what's the first thing we have to do before we even start judging? Sign the papers. Even before that. To read the criteria. Even before that. Decide to be a judge. Say? Decide to be a judge. Decide to be a judge. Yeah. Getting close. Getting close. To have a right to judge, to be a judge. You're on the button. The very first thing you have to do is fill out your eligibility form. So go ahead. This is an, let's say, <coughs> this is an division contest. We, we're doing a division contest. So, tick the right boxes. You need a pen? No, uh, some forms. Oh, plenty of those. There we go. Thank you very much. So, you tick the box. International Speech Contest.
So we tick the box, international, in our set division, date of contest, today, because the contest is today. <coughs> and you have to sign it and print your name, a printed name. For the ladies, we are filling out the eligibility form. You're going to be a judge. And you're not disqualified for time. And what is the name of contest? What did we say? <laughs> what did we say? What did we say? International. 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 All done? So, are we all eligible? Who's not? Who's not? I'm not. You're not. Why are you, why are you not eligible? I'm not past my uh, six. You haven't done six projects. Who else is in that bracket? So who is allowed to judge here then this contest? Okay, I'll be very, very kind with you. <coughs> We're going to make it a club contest. Woohoo! Club contest. So we all can judge. In that form, oh, yeah. you can ask for another form, or you yeah. can just scribble your initials next to the mistake, or uh. scratch it out, or do a doodle. The creativity is endless. Okay, then we go to the judging form. So just keep that, um, the form you've just filled out, just for reference for yourself. I'm not going to collect them. It would uh, take up too much time. So we go to the scoring form. What is the next step we will do on the scoring form? Write down the names of the contestants. Write down the names of the contestants for one, yeah. But we don't know the names yet, because the contest chair is still to appear on stage and get the flip chart open with the contestants' names. But you already have this form, so what would be the first thing you could do on this form? Sign it. We can sign, sign it. it. Sign it. Sign it and put your name in the left bottom corner. I do want to sign it. Somebody takes my... No, just sign with yeah. Donald Duck. No. Sign with Donald Duck. But you're going to take it home yourself. So, If you don't trust yourself. Then <laughs> okay, yeah? There was uh, some of the uh, rules that I cannot be a judge if I have a, a colleague from the same club. But, if but if do we know in advance? Yeah, on club level I know, but it was international <laughs> before. So and then we, we, to we know first uh, who's competing and if we can participate. The chief judge should find that out. If you tell the chief judge I want to be a judge, because the contestants only get known at a certain point in time. And therefore we need a pool of judges so we can delete the ones that are not eligible because there is a contestant of that particular club. They Where do you find those? Uh, look in the yellow pages and the swimming pool. <laughs> no, the chief judge and the uh, contest chair, they should really uh, ask around. And as I said, be proactive yourself. If you want to judge, take an opportunity, see where there is a contest and put your name forward. I was lucky to be a chief judge in Krakow. And one of the things that the problem is that not a lot of people, when you signed up that you wanted to go to the conference, there's a question box. Hmm. So it would help in the future that it doesn't matter if you're chosen or not, but if you could say you would volunteer for something. Yep. Because otherwise it's, everyone's going to rush around on the last day. It was work, but it 
A lot easier, yeah, yeah. It's all in the preparation and planning. So practice makes perfect. This is one speech I've got for you, which is the world champion 2014. Or the world champion 2013. Or the world champion 2012. Or a live speech on the stage here. Who is for 2014? Hands. 2013. Hands. Is that a hand? <laughs> 2012. Live speech here. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so who has seen the speech of 2014? Which one's the, the winning? Yeah, 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 the winning. 2013. 2012. Maybe you may remember the title, 2012, Trust is a Must, Ryan Avery. Yeah. 2013, Changed by a Tire. The <coughs> Bulgarian... Uh, guy? Ruslan yeah, Vasile. some. Yeah. I want Bulgarian guy. <laughs> yeah, but, but you were a lonely voice in the desert, my dear. I so. We're going to have a treat in a way that we're going to listen to a live speech of five minutes by no other than our fellow Toastmaster Klaus Roth with the title. Oh. Um, I, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 23rd, 2014. May 23rd, 2014. Why is it important to know the title? There might be a message already in there. If it's not mentioned in the whole speech, what was that all about? May 23rd, 2014, Klaus wrote. Could you time five to seven minutes, Mr. Timer? Please welcome Klaus Roth. We all have goals in our life. We were thinking about this 2015. Where we want to stand in 2020, in five years. What are our goals? Maybe you want to be married then. One, two babies. I want a big car a house, a good job, I want to be entrepreneur. And I want to ask you, where you want to stand in 2020? Tell me. Be more active. Be more active, very precise, a bit more precise could be nice. What do you want to be in 2020? I really know. <laughs> Ivona. In 2020, where do you want to stand? New Zealand. New Zealand. Ah. <laughs> Piotr, 2020, where do you want to be? What do you want? Father of five children. Five oh, children, no. okay. <laughs> you have to start very early now. <laughs> or you can convince five different women. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Father Toastmaster, you have each of us, we have goals. Some goals we achieve, others we don't achieve. And sometimes it takes place that the goals from, for us it had been very important and suddenly they lose any importance and they sound for us childish. May 2014, the 23rd. After meeting at the Austin Toastmasters, like today, it was in the morning, coffee drinking. I was been exhausted about was full empowered by two smalls. I was a sunny day, I was sitting in the car heading for the airport in Warsaw. It was a wonderful day. I was driving, wonderful. Suddenly, everything was light blue. And the outside mirror has been torn away by a truck. I was sitting in the car, not panicking. Driving 200 meters, to the left, switched off the engine, and I was back. I saw me sitting in a scrambled car. My body scrambled. I, I smelled my blood running out. I saw myself dead. 
I saw myself maybe paralyzed. I was just sitting and touching the steering. And one thought comes to mind. One thing comes to my thoughts. This could be the day I have to leave the life I'm living up to. All my goals are not of any importance. I said to myself, hmm, now I'm ready to leave the life paralyzed in coma, maybe my brain has been damaged, or maybe dead. I thought to myself, just sitting like this, did I everything I want to do until this moment? Are there things to be done which has been postponed and not realized? And this day was a change in my life. From this day I thought to myself, now I do it. Because a lot of things we don't do because we are fear of it. And I want to ask you one thing and please have it in your head. What you can do if fear doesn't play any role. We fear to blame ourselves, to make ourselves a fool. We stay in jobs, we are that boring because we are fearing a how I get my income my, for my daily expenses. We stay in relationships because we are used to it. Because for fear of fearing, we are scared about <coughs> the future. And I said to myself, now I take a risk. I say things to people, and it don't matter to me if it's the people saying, oh, this Klaus is stupid. It's silly, his wishes. Or it's not appropriate. On this day, it was not started in this moment, but this moment was a jumping, standing on the edge and saying, ha, ah, I have to face my life as a paralyzed, sitting in the wheelchair, <coughs> or with a smashed brain, and said, this time, I changed. If I want something, I say this. It doesn't matter what the people are saying. I'll give you one of my silly examples. Next year, I will have two cows for summer. It's ridiculous, but all my life I won't have cows because they are sitting, they are eating, they are food. I do it. All people, Klaus, you're stupid. No, I will do it. And other things, they're very private. I don't tell you what I'm really inside. Outside, I'm the nice Klaus, but inside, I have wishes. Wishes for closeness. Which is for adventures, which is for things I only want to do, but I didn't do it because I don't make myself a fool. But what could be your plans? And again, I hammer into your head this word. What would you do if fear doesn't play any role? What would you do if fear? doesn't play any role. What would you do, you, you do if fear doesn't play any role? What would you do? One minute for the judges to complete the form. And please help me welcome the second contestant of this morning. You see how, how much time you've got? One minute? It's not that long. Everyone is still working on their sheet. And the second contestant is already announced. It's something you have to train yourself when you are a judge. That you only have one minute to complete this. This is why some judges already start to score during the speech. Fair? No. Because the end may be absolutely brilliant, like with Klaus. During his speech it was fairly sedate, fairly, and all of a sudden at the end he got energetic and probably got some extra brownie points as well. 
So one minute is not very long. Mind you, don't worry about adding up as yet, because at the end of the contest there will be two minutes, which is 100% more than one minute. <laughs> so the adding up, leave that till your final minute at the end of the contest. Some people may need a calculator, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But at the end, you've got two minutes to determine your winner. But hey, we're not the boom ends here. And often you see at contests that people walk around, uh, do we need to collect more judges? So there is a bit of extra time. Don't feel yourself stressed out about it. Because as with everything in Toastmasters, it should still be fun. You should still really enjoy the occasion. Then Is any tough no, but I would do it to find out who is the winner <laughs> on points. <laughs> and so can you change your score at the end of you all of the speeches? You can change Perfectly okay, because remember, the chief judge will only get the bottom little bit. All you've done above there in those columns and, and the numbers you've written in and scratched out, no, 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 10 points, 9 points. Or in reflection. I gave that speaker not enough points. You're perfectly welcome to do whatever you want to do in that table. It's yours. It's your property. Only that little bottom with number one, two, three goes to the chief judge. The way you arrived at your winner is nobody's business. Be aware this is a tool. As I said before, if you just want to sit back you write the names of the contestants on your sheet, you have listened to all the speakers, and at the end of the day you say, for me, was well, speaker number four, winner, clearly. Without even putting a single number in that table, nobody can pull you up and say, hey, no numbers there, what happened there? Because they won't even know, but there might be sitting somebody next to you. Mm. Okay. Mm. No? So be aware of your environment as well as you judge. People will look over your shoulder on your sheet or, you know. So be, have an awareness of that. So who has 100 points for Klaus? Or uh, do we need still say 10 seconds to add it up? <laughs> we need to add, uh, add it up. <laughs> but to find a winner, where are we with time, Matthias? Oh, no, 15 minutes left, eh? yeah. To find a winner, we need to add up the numbers. So what I want to do is not add up the total. I want to look at it block by block. So we look at the first block, content, which was a maximum of 50 points. Who wants to start the bidding for Klaus? He is okay with the numbers because he's a, a true trooper. So who wants to start with a number for content? 35. Come on, don't be shy, we're learning here. We, 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 you won't be smacked when you have 50. 45. 45. 50. 50. Full, full amount. Full amount. Who has 50 as well? Is there any other one? 49. 49. Anyone else? 50. Did I hear another 50 there? So another 50? 43. 40. 40. 50. 52. 40. 40. 52. 52. 52. <laughs> 52. <laughs> you? 54. 54 for the first block. <laughs> Content. <laughs> Maximum 50, 50 points. <laughs> <laughs> 48. 48. What, what do you see here? What do you see here? Despite having the same form, none of us in a big way say, Klaus, good content, we give you 45. It varies. And you should not get upset about it because it's your judging. You have to find the winner. <coughs> but suppose you would have given the 50 points, like this gentleman did, and there's still nine speakers to come. What are you going to do with the other nine speakers? Maybe then, no. uh, just then. Yeah. So a little... Uh, 
a good technique would be what? Yourself a room. Yeah, give yourself a room. Exactly. Oh. Give yourself a bit of room so you can move up yep. or down and not allocate the maximum amount of points. Delivery. Maximum of 30 points. There, that's a very quiet corner. Anyone with numbers for delivery? 20. 20. 20. 21. 23. How many points? 26 here. You in any no points? No points. No points. No points. 25. 24. 22. So all above the 20. Finally, we have the language block here. Appropriateness to the speech and the correctness of pronunciation which I even sometimes have difficulty with because you have to move your lips to properly pronounce the words in English. And a maximum of 20. So maybe here in this corner. 17. 17. 15. Don't ask me. Seven. Seven. That's okay because we were 20, full, full amount. Yeah. So again, the question goes back to you like with him. You've given the full amount of 20 points, but it's a contest with 10 speakers. But I have a space later, I can change my mind. Depends on the spe speakers after what they will be there. So I have my logic. Are you in IT? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's an international Toastmaster. IT, international Toastmaster. What are you talking about? Computers. But I'm IT in my work, IT. <laughs> <laughs> or ET. <laughs> <laughs> what is obvious of this little exercise we've been doing? That you should not be afraid to allocate points. Don't be judged by your fellow judges. Be yourself. Be authentic in your judging. Here you have a tool to guide yourself in allocating points. But if you bring this form to the contest, and the contest has started, and then you have to start thinking, uh, what was that again for content? Uh, what was that again for language? Look through this form a little bit beforehand. OK. So total, is there any totals available yet? 73. 73. 80. Sorry? 80. 80. 80. 84. 91. 91. 70. 70. 96. 71. So final question. Would Klaus be the world champion of public speaking in District 95? Yes. Yes. Of course. Klaus, thank you very much for your contribution. Most appreciated. These uh, videos are freely available on the YouTube, so if you want to do a bit more practice, watch these and allocate points. Just, just make it like a learning tool, you know. So that leaves us with the last slide. Questions I possibly could answer when I cannot answer them. I write to Toastmaster International on your <coughs> behalf and get to the answer. Or is everything crystal clear? or everything, a blank. I know it was a lot of information, and, um, but I think it was important information, and hopefully will give you a bit of confidence to, to do judging in the future. Do we come back to the uh, answers that you made before? For example, after 10 speakers, you think about the first speaker, or is just too much and uh, don't remember uh, anything about the first? Everyone can only be a judge on that for his or herself because everyone thinks differently. Uh, some people have the capacity to, to take in 10 speeches. Uh, others 
by the time we get to speaker 10, they don't even know what was said in speaker one, in speech one. So it, it, that, that would be a different thing for, for everyone involved, I would say. I don't think we can give a general answer to that. It, it's up to your own capability. But having said that, really, a contest of 10 speakers is not uh, on a regular basis. It might be at a table topics contest at a club where everyone is involved. I've been in the table topics at my club where we ended up within the room for the first speaker, only the judges. So by the time the 10 speakers had gone through the contest, the room was filled up again. Um, but other than that, in club area, you're probably looking at a maximum of four, five speakers. So that should make the, the role a bit lighter. Mm -hmm. David? Are there any special seating arrangements for the judges? Oh, I hope that the chairs are comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it is often said as a judge to sit in the front because there might be some form of um, failure in the, uh, in the um, uh, sound. I personally uh, don't like to sit up front and my main reason for that is that I would like to watch the audience reaction. Whereas when you sit up front as a judge and you, and you do your, your judging, <laughs> you know, it's too obvious. So I would mix and mingle in the audience in the first 10 rows or whatever it is. If it's a smaller room, I would even sit at the back probably. It all depends on the, uh, the setup of the room. There was another question here somewhere. I wanted to ask if it's possible to set more time for judges in the contest room. Set for more time for the, for, the, for the judges. Yeah, Instead of the one minute. minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or at the end. I think we, uh, in Toastmasters International, we are open to any suggestions. If you had a particular contest and you see that it's an, a fairly new crop of judges as chief judge, you talk to the contest chair and you say, okay, why don't we make two minutes between speakers? Um, and I still announce one speaker for the judges. Now there might be one or two who will look on their watch there if it's indeed a minute, but usually it goes over a minute. The minute you just got was close to two minutes already. Does it? At the end, you're allowed as long as you want to because the room has to be silent and you can calculate and do what you want to do. If you want to spend 20 minutes just doing it, everyone will be like, it's not a problem, you're allowed to do that. It's just after 20 minutes and you hold up your ticket that everyone in the room looks at. Oh, <laughs> was she? You know, so I would be careful with that <laughs> part. But indeed. There, there is no written rule in stone that two minutes, okay, give me your form, you know, you're uh, in charge. Uh, I would like to ask about the audience. And the influence on the minds of the opinions to be a judge, because uh, in which aspect is it is important to, to, to take care about the audience reaction? It's the aspect where we looking at the content and it's under the block effectiveness. Yeah, yeah. It, that's your own guideline if you say look I don't want to hear anything about the audience I don't want to be influenced by the audience that's fine. Um, but I think, for me, if there is 50 people in the audience, that that, to me, is a source to, to see how the speech comes across. And um, if there is a speech and everyone is sitting like you are sitting now, then I say, okay, um, iffy, iffy, you know. So it's up to the individual again uh, to take that into account or not into account. And what to do where there is a um, when someone uh, give an uh, objection of the judges, of the, of the speech? The, the content of the speech, you mean? Or the originality? Yes, not, yes disqualification or something. You have to, if you think that the speech was not original, you go up to your chief judge or the conference, uh, contest chair, sorry, 
and you tell, I've got the impression that this speech was not original material. And we're getting to a stage, obviously, where this question becomes more and more potent because what is still being original? You know, it, it, uh, is that my own voice, my delivery? Uh, no, it's about content, but how, how can you be original? In your speech, if you use other material, you should quote it in your speech that you have sourced it from this or that source. So that's important. And if you have a, an, uh, an issue with the originality, it, the contestant will be called, it will be discussed. And it's not that it's automatically disqualification, there is a uh, response. Asking what chief judge should do in that case, how to... How to it's in the speech rule book, well, what, what you have to do there. The contestant will be called in and will be told that there has been an, a protest received on the issue of originality. And you can ask the contestant where he or she got her material from, how the speech was done. So it's almost like an inquisition. <laughs> and they say, disqualified, you know, because there's nothing original in there. And, and that decision is up to the uh, chief judge and the contest uh, chair. So based on, this, on the uh, conversation with the speaker? Yes. Yes. What's your opinion about some clubs having uh, ballot for uh, the best speaker, which is uh, uh, sort of separate from uh, the uh, judges' uh, vote, but yet it's announced and it's um, called the audience award. I think that it's inappropriate because it's in some way questions the judges' verdict that should be fine. I'm, I mean your car park there. I think uh, exactly along the same lines. If it's a contest, we have judges, the judges will come up with a winner and that is it. If you then ask for the audience popular vote, as it were, uh, that would be a very subjective uh, vote, obviously, unless someone scores as well. But I think it's, it's two elements brought into one which should not be in one. We, we do have best speaker during normal club meetings, for instance, that there's four speeches during the night and that you find the best speaker then, fine. But in contest, I would not go there. My, that's my personal view. I'm not uh, representing the view of anyone else. On the other hand, I think we should strive for having the largest number of judges uh, which is feasible, like at any level. Again, yeah, going back to the speech rule book, there is a minimum set, right. there's no maximum set, so uh, you can have as many as you want. What is this minimum? It depends on the level of contest. Uh, the club, I think it's five, and then at area it goes up to seven, I believe. So it's between five and seven, it's quite a bit. And in the past it's also said as far as practical, so there was a... a, a, a a, a, a clause there that you say, okay, I only can find two, two judges, so those two judges will judge the contest. Final question. Yeah. This is a doozy one. Okay, then it's time to wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> the audience are not allowed to communicate with the speaker mm -hmm. during the speech. However, if it's noticed that it is, how can you know, is it up to the judges then to do that? And if the judge doesn't go up to the chief judge, it doesn't count, or how does it go? How do you mean the audience communicating with the speaker like Klaus was doing with the, f with the question? Like time and stuff like this thing, and you know, louder and those sort of instructions to the, from the audience to the speaker. Because it's been seen in past contests, it has happened. That people have been like, you know, too loud or faster, and it's been going on. But what's the rules about that? If, it's no, if there's no rules on, the, on this item in the speech rule book, it's... It says no communication between the audience and the stage. But is it only the judges that are allowed to complain? And if a judge doesn't complain about it to the chief judge? Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's only the judge that can complain. As we said in one of the slides, nobody in the audience can complain. Or, or can complain, but it should not be accepted. And is it the audience goes to a judge because it's sent next to me and then it's up to them, like the pressure of the peer pressure? Try to keep it clean. 
Okay, folks, there's some noises in the hallway. I do hope that I was able to give you a little bit of learning element about judging and that I give you an appetite to be a judge in the upcoming cycle of uh, judging in the spring. Thank you very much for your attention and um, happy toastmastering.